Joining me right now is Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, walk us through what takes place this morning and then this weekend. Do you have enough votes to confirm Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court? Uh, we voted at uh, 1030. Uh, then not much between now and 1030. The votes will be cast. Then kicks in uh, 30 hours of debate. Uh, if it's all used, the final vote will come sometime 5 o'clock or a little later, uh, Saturday uh, night. Uh, and uh, the leader said this is one of the few times uh, that we're going to go to a roll call not knowing really how it's going to come out. Uh, it probably boils down to uh, three Republicans and one Democrat uh, uh, as uh, making the difference. Uh, the White House is very positive. Uh, I feel very good about it, uh, but uh, you just don't know. You just don't know, particularly when you've got lots of moving parts. We heard from Senator Daines from Montana. His daughter is getting married. He'd like to walk his daughter down the aisle. Are you going to have his vote? Uh, we'll have his vote if we need it, and uh, there will be plenty of time. Uh, he's made arrangements for private transportation uh, to get back here very quickly, uh, and votes can be held open for hours if they need be, uh, but uh, he, uh, hopefully he will be able to do what every father wants to do uh, and uh, be able to carry out his responsibilities to his daughter and his new son-in-law uh, and get their life started the way everybody wants uh, marriage to start. So just, so, uh, just, so just to be clear, you're saying that he's going to go walk his daughter down the aisle and possibly come back. Are you saying that the, the, the broader vote is going to be Sunday or Saturday? Uh, I think you're going to find, uh, well, it's going to be uh, Saturday or later Saturday night, uh, but, uh, but uh, it, it depends upon whether his vote's needed. Uh, he's made very clear to Kavanaugh, very clear to the president, uh, very clear to the leader of the Senate that if his vote's needed, he's going to be here. You mentioned the, the, the three Republicans and the one Democrat that you're, you're looking toward. Uh, Jeff Flake, of course, was the one who wanted the FBI investigation. Have you spoken with Jeff Flake post the FBI investigation report? I have not, but I've followed everything he said on Twitter uh, to the news media. And it seems to me that uh, he's an intellectually honest person. I was sitting in the committee when he uh, demanded uh, to have a seven-day de uh, delay. I was with him in the, in the rump session of the, of the committee and with uh, Susan and with Lisa uh, to see what needed to be done over the next seven days. Uh, it was done by the FBI, and he's had uh, positive things to say about uh, uh, what the FBI did. And I think uh, being uh, intellectually honest as he is and very independent as he is, uh, that it looks to me like he's satisfied, but he hasn't said how he's going to vote. And he may be like I am sometimes. You just want everybody, your constituents, to know that you're that you're going to take everything into consideration, even something that might come up at the last minute. And, so and you don't so you don't announce your vote. You you mentioned Susan and Lisa, meaning Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski. Any thoughts there? Uh, have you had a chance to talk with them post the FBI report? Uh, not personally talk to them, but uh, boy, I'll tell you, uh, Susan is very open with what she thinks, and she spoke very positively about it. Uh, in other words, uh, about what we planned seven days ago, it materialized that the FBI did its work. There were not corroborating uh, witnesses to what uh, Dr. Ford said, uh, and and uh, and that's what they were looking for. Sir, sir, can you tell us a bit about the FBI report? What you learned after this investigation this past week? Yeah, uh, we found out, uh, as I just said, there's no corroborating evidence uh, that uh, the incident that Dr. Ford talks about that I think actually happened, but it would not connect Judge Kavanaugh to it. Uh, and following up with two or three others uh, that uh, we found out that there wasn't any corroboration with, uh, with, uh, with what they had previously said. 
Uh, and beyond that, it's difficult for me under the rules of FBI uh, files uh, to say very much uh, so, so, publicly. I mean, what does your gut say happened here, sir? I mean, he was very believable. She was very believable at, at the hearings. Yeah. What? Uh, my gut feeling is that we ought to follow our principle of American law, uh, that you ought to uh, not be considered guilty just because there's allegations. Mm. You've had some very impassioned words uh, about this whole process, obviously also about the bias in the media. I want to uh, run a soundbite of you and, and, and get you talking about this. Watch this. Now, I would never use the word fake news. I consider you folks policemen for our de democratic system of government. But I want to show you where some of you have bias. I've had uh, demonstrators in my office uh, for two weeks now, both for Kavanaugh and against Kavanaugh. And uh, one time, the people that were for Kavanaugh wanted to be interviewed. And they said, we only inter we're only interested in view interviewing people against Kavanaugh. Now, is that, that's a bias that none of you should be proud of. What has gone on here, Senator? I mean, you, you, you've had people thrown out of restaurants. You've had people shamed and criticized online and obviously protesters in your face. First off, do you believe George Soros is behind all of this, paying these people to get you and your colleagues in elevators or wherever they can get in your face? I have uh, heard so many uh, people believe that. I tend to believe it. I believe it fits in his uh, attack mode that he has and how he uses his billions and billions of resources. Uh, I think it promotes incivility in American society, but I also think that the resistance that's been in existence since November 2016 uh, is headquartered here on Capitol Hill when you have Congresswomen say that you get in the face of anybody that's in the cabinet. We have senators say get in the face. We ought to be setting an example of civility as uh, leaders and public servants, uh, not encouraging that incivility, that the resistance is very much uh, uh, you, uh, their modi, modus operandi. Well, what are you going to do about it, sir? Some of your colleagues, Maxine Waters is out there saying impeach 45, get in people's faces when you don't agree with them. Uh, there's a lot of people in the Senate that would disagree very, uh, very violently what I just said, but I, I, I'm one of 100 senators. I don't control the other 99 senators. I'm not sure you can pass any laws to do anything about it. So I've taken a position for the last fi 15 or 20 years that an individual in public service ought to set an example for the rest of society. I, 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 Chuck Grassley's got to do it by himself, and Joe Blow and Mary Smith, mm. members of the Senate, have to do it the same way. Do you think any of this is impacting your chances in the midterm elections, the Senate? Uh, it, there's some evidence, but it's still 32 days away, so I don't think you can count too much on it right now. But seems to be a lot of sympathy for Kavanaugh. A lot of things have come to attention. Seems to be moving people more in the red direction instead of the blue direction. Uh, and I hope it continues. And I think that the battle cry of Republicans all over the country for the next 32 days is ought to be remember. Uh, Kavanaugh. Remember Kavanaugh. All right. And, and just to reiterate, you think he's going to get confirmed? Yes. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much.